Turn your Bibles. Yes, and we are good. Most of the time, I, I have been I have been remembered time and time again as the Sunday school teacher who taught on Babylon, the mother of harlots, on Mother's Day, and I will probably never live that down. Um. Hey, but it was memorable. <laughs> Turn in your Bibles, Proverbs chapter 31, one of the most widely used portions of text for Mother's Day. 31, I'm going to read the last um, six verses from verse 25 through 31, verses 25 through 31. And I would like to say very specially, Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and all the ladies here. Uh, we appreciate you. We love you. And we don't know what we'd do without you. If you have a mother that is still alive, I encourage you, no matter what your relationship with her is, reach out to her and let her know that you do love her. Um, if you uh, are here and you're, you've got a uh, wife, let her know how much you appreciate her be a thankless job. Let's read Proverbs chapter 31, verses 25 through 30. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with, with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is vain, is, is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Now I want to um, emphasize verse 25, strength and honor are her clothing. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. It's eternally settled in heaven, whether we're having a special service, a special holiday, Lord, in memory or in recognition of our mothers, or whether it be a day just during the week, it is a day that you have made to be glad, to rejoice and be glad in, and your word is the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. I pray, God, that you'll give us the wisdom by the Holy Ghost to understand what your spirit would say to us, that we would not deviate from its truths, that we will build our lives upon its precepts and that we will be forever in, uh, in, in humility before you and for your word. Lord, I pray that you'll bless the remainder of this service. Everything that's said and done will bring you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to tell you the perfect story. The perfect story. There was a perfect man who met a perfect woman. After a perfect courtship, they had a perfect wedding. Their life together was, of course, perfect. One snowy, stormy Christmas Eve, this perfect couple was driving along a winding road when they noticed someone at the roadside in distress. Being the perfect couple, they stopped to help, and there stood Santa Claus with a huge bundle of toys. Not wanting to disappoint any children on the eve of Christmas, the perfect couple loaded Santa and his toys into their vehicle. Soon they were driving along delivering toys. Unfortunately, the driving conditions deteriorated, and the perfect couple in Santa Claus had an accident. Only one of them survived the accident. Who was the survivor? The answer was the perfect woman. She's the only one that really existed in the first place. Everyone knows there's no Santa Claus. And there's no such thing as a perfect man. To which the male responds, So if there is no perfect man and no Santa Claus, the perfect woman must have been driving. This explains why there was a car accident. <laughs> all right. That was a, it was funny, all right? It was funny. Come on, that was funny. All right. I am sure 
that the ladies enjoy the expressions of gratitude and love around Mother's Day, but I often wonder if they feel just a bit discouraged by the ideal perfection of the Proverbs 31 woman. I see her as a biblical Barbie doll. So like the biblical Barbie doll, does the Proverbs 31 woman fall into the myth mythology of Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy, or the Perfect Man? I look at it, the Proverbs 31, and I know that there's probably numerous sermons going on about the Proverbs 31 woman around the country and possibly around the world today. And I've read it, and boy, I'm glad there ain't a Proverbs 32 man. My goodness, folks, loosen up. There is no Proverbs 32 man, and I am glad, because there has been a very high standard, a very high mark set for the Proverbs 31 lady. It has been set high, and I'm glad that there's no Proverbs 32 man. I've read the articles by authors, bloggers, and leaders, and thought, man, I wish I could be like that. And I wonder how many ladies feel a bit underwhelming when they stack themselves up to the Proverbs 31 woman. A what? I'm sorry, that I missed that. Re I, I don't understand that. Re <laughs> uh, but when compared to the lady in this passage, I mean, when you... Consider this woman, this Proverbs 31 woman that is described in her all her ideology and in her ideal circumstance and ideal uh, perfection. Who can measure up? She is super industrious. Um, it, it says that she gets up early and she goes to bed late and she uh, has... Taking, she's out buying property, and she's out. Uh, per, she, she, while she's buying property, she's also weaving all the garments that her the kids are going to wear and her family's going to wear. Then she weaves a little extra to sell, so that she's got plenty of money. And she's not worried about tomorrow because she's done everything necessary to make her household comfortable today. And then look at her family. They gloat over her. Mama is idolized. And daddy's like, oh, look at my trophy here. And, and, so, and many of the women are going, this is not reality. Half the time, we, I can't find my kids' shoes. When we go grocery shopping, my kids are like, Oh, I have to go. Making my kids clothes, I can't make, I can't hardly get them to go shopping for clothes. If we've got the money to buy clothes, and that other times we're going, well, you're just going to have to wear this from your cousin or your so-and-so. When you look at the ideology or the ideal perfection of Proverbs 31, you go, that's not reality. And I so, sometimes wonder if, if, if that creates a bit of a problem. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that there are days when you don't feel worth a nickel, much less the value of rubies. Those ungrateful husbands. Those curtain climbers, those children, they might rise up and call you something, but it ain't blessed. And if you read the first chapter, you will be introduced to King Lemuel, the name that appears nowhere else in the Bible. King Lemuel, the name pronounced, uh, uh, appears nowhere else in the Bible. Many resources, and I'm not going to give you an exhaustive list of all the resources that... Uh, uh, claim this, but they claim this to be Solomon. Many of the Proverbs were written by Solomon. The name Lemuel actually means um, belonging to God or he who has heard from God, which Solomon may fit that, uh, may fit that but follow that through to its logical conclusion. Do you know who the mother is that's talking to Solomon about the ideal woman? Ooh, that'll rattle your theology, huh? <laughs> the 
commits adultery with David herself, Bathsheba is, taught, is describing the ideal woman. Most of us don't know her by anything else except for the uh, Uriah, her, uh, the Hittite, her husband, was, put, uh, was executed so that David could have her because he had cheated on Uriah with her. And her, her first, uh, her, her, the, 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 the child died, and then her second born was Solomon, who would become king. Now, don't you reckon she's got a lot to live up to, describing the ideal woman? Now, she's also talking to her son, if, if it is indeed Solomon, who had 300 wives and 700 concubines. Apparently, he was looking for Proverbs 31 and didn't find her. And it took him nearly a thousand women to figure out, wow, she's hard to find. <laughs> I love it. Everybody's going, huh? Where's he going? Well, I'm enjoying the ride, so y'all don't have to. I'm enjoying myself. I kind of wonder if she felt the pressure to measure up, too. It all feels like too much, but I do want you to know that you are valued and appreciated. There's an old saying, clothes make the man. Anybody ever heard that? Clothes make the man. If you want to be the best, you've got to look the best. And in 1928, there was a silent film entitled Clothes Make the Woman. And if there is anybody on this planet that feels the pressure to measure up on the fashion scale, it's the ladies. Thank God, in the course of several decades, blue jeans are still in style for guys. I can wear a pair of blue jeans, and I can wear a shirt, and I can pretty well be in style all the time. But ladies are constantly pressured by billboards, movies, uh, uh, Pinterest. What in the world is that? As if women didn't have enough junk to deal with. Now they've got, they've got some cake-baking guru who has nothing better to do than stand and perfect a casserole for everybody, and it'll feed 800, and it's only made with three things I found laying around the house, and everybody can do this, and you're going, what? What's wrong with you people? And y'all watch this. You don't have enough pressure on you? But our merchandise-driven society changes fashions in a revolving cycle to make sure that women folk are constantly buying stuff to keep up. The commercials, the magazines, the billboards, the movies, I'll call upon ladies to wear the brand. Pastels and floral prints. I don't know what any of these are. I just wrote them down. Pastels and floral prints, shrinking hemlines and plunging necklines, shorter shorts, crop shirts, less clothes, higher prices. Fashions and trends. Ladies care because they have been taught to care. You know who tells the ladies that they should care about these fashions? The men. Come on. They've been taught to care, and men have been taught to care too. Pretty ladies in the latest trends parade across our televisions and our phone screens in an endless display, to, uh, to de uh, 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 display designed to entice us from the familiar of our favorite female to desire something new, something exotic, and something different. If you don't think it's true, then you start paying attention. They have designed this so that the man, most of whom are naturally visual in their nature, in their makeup, we're visual. They parade the lady across in the newest fashion trend. And our natu natural inclination is to say, Boy, I wish my lady would wear something like that. I wish she would. And so what does our ladies do in an, a desperate attempt to retain our attention? They go out and buy said garbage to accommodate their said man. 
A lot of times all this seems to fall on the woman, slap the lady down. Why are you into the fashion? Because men made them that way. They, we have been taught how to perform like a bunch of puppies, like a bunch of uh, circus a- acts. The devil snaps his whip and up on the soccer ball we jump. Hello? And we have been taught to perform to the devil's tune along with, uh, just like we're in a three ring circus. We're in bondage to a world system. We play right along, like a cocker spaniel, man. Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog. Oh, slip us a Scooby snack and we're good. We play right along. We do exactly what they tell us to do. And in a desperate attempt to retain our attention, our beautiful ladies rush out to buy the latest branded the latest, branded for another season until appetites change again. We have all been well trained. Holly Weird snaps and we sit up and beg. But there is a better way, a more perfect beauty. What if we allowed our ladies to trade the garments of materialism for the garments of strength? You know, I have heard, and I'm sure that most of you have heard, women referred to as the weaker sex. My wife, I'm not going to talk about how, if my wife gets mad at me, y'all might end up with another preacher, Um, so she she might tear me up. But it may very well be that women may not be able to lift what a man can lift, or run like a man can run, or... but there's no way that that has to be the only symbol of strength. Why do we measure everything in the material? Because even us Christians ain't sold out to the spiritual. We talk spiritual when it comes to God, but when it comes to us, we only play spiritual when it suits our purposes and meets our the conversation of the moment. But folks... There are ladies in this congregation pray you under the table, men. There have been churches built by women and hot dog sales and putting together nickels and quarters and dimes and fundraisers and put carpet and lights and pianos and paid salaries and put in air conditioners. Folks, the church in America owes a great deal not to the men but to the women. Now, does that mean that a man and a woman are equal in all aspects? No, I do believe that there are roles. I believe in complementary roles. A woman was never intended to be a father. And a man was never intended to be a mother. But when we complement each other in a biblical uh, aspect, when we follow the biblical principle and do what we're supposed to do and perform our biblical and God-given roles adequately, we will find that we greatly reflect the image of God. We more perfectly reflect the image of God. I cannot reflect the image of God in myself, not perfectly. Because there are attributes of God that I do not possess in myself. You ask my kids, who is judgment? Maybe not so much now, but when they were kids, who was judgment? Who was wrath? I am wrath. My kids did not want me to come after them with the belt. I am wrath. But when but when somebody got hurt, we'd be out working. I, I can remember, I can see it. I can see one in my mind. I was out putting in a fence, uh, using a pair of knuckle crackers, my PhD, post old diggers. And I was going at it, 
Oh, and hurt himself. Owen did that a lot. He was a boy. I love him. I'm surprised he survived the 14. But I now have hope for him. I now have hope for him. But he hurt himself. And here I was. He was there. I was here. Mama was yonder. He hurt himself. I went, hey, son. Fine. He didn't want me. Because who was love and compassion and mercy and healing? That was Mama. And no matter how much I wanted to help him, Mama was those things. And so in that, in that relationship, as I reflect one and she reflects the other, God brought twain together to reflect one image. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 1. Strength put on like a garment that, can, that needs not to be taken off, that preserves cleanliness, that preserves uh, faith, that preserves her, uh, her beauty. We have been told that beauty is what Hollywood calls it. But it's not. It can be a strength. The word translated strength means boldness, might. The, uh, one of the commentaries I read said she is invested with a moral force and dignity which arms her against care and worry. When all this virus stuff come down and everybody started talking about furlough and my job told me I had to start taking my vacation time. That worried me. I don't know. I'd never been laid off from a job. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what that was going to feel like. And it scared me. As a man, it scared me. The aspect, the prospect of not being able to provide for my family. It worried me. It made me nervous. If my wife had gotten nervous too, I think I would have just went out and laid in the middle of the traffic. But my wife told me, we're going to be okay. That's strength. That is a moral fortitude that helped hold this together when this old hillbilly got scared. And when mama says, we can make it, I draw strength from that. So who's the weaker sex? I start wondering if that, no, that name has been misapplied because I have found myself numerous times weak and Mama has been strong. And Mama has said, I believe that you'll take care of us. And, we, and you know what that makes me want to do? That makes me want to take care of us. I quit going, I don't know if I can do this, to going, I'm going to do this. Hello? Any other men like that? Any other men feel like that? Mama believes in me. Even when I don't believe in me. And I can do this. Now I'm not going to say that everybody's had the perfect relationship. I'm not going to even say that we've had the perfect relationship. But I can tell you, when I'm up and she's down, I try to help her up. When she's up and I'm down, she tries to help me up. Woe to us if we're both down at the same time. It hurts. This is a strength of spirit, a strength of faith, more than a strength of body. I believe that the woman should no longer wear the name or the badge, the label of weakness. They should seek to wear the label of strength, dignity, and honor. I will say this, and you don't have to agree with me, but I don't, I don't care what you think. I believe that dignity in, the, in, in our society is becoming a, a dinosaur. I believe that dignity and class is becoming extinct. Don't think nobody agrees because nobody's saying amen. Maybe I've made all, have I made everybody mad? Oh, um, okay. 
The Hebrew word hadar literally means magnificence, beauty, or honor. Dignity means the quality of being worthy of honor and respect. People say, well, nobody respects me. Have you proven yourself worthy of respect? I have noticed, and this is where I'm going to slap around some young ladies who ain't mothers yet, but are going to become mothers. If you want the respect of a young man, demand it by your actions. Demand respect. By being respectable. Women, men say, why a woman don't respect me? Have you, have you been respectable? When we hold one another in dignity, first of all, dignity says that I am not the supreme value here. Dignity, by its nature, is others focused. You place upon someone dignity, worthy of respect. But in so doing, you make sure that you are respectable. I told my wife, or my, not my wife, my son and my daughter, don't worry about finding the perfect spouse. Try to become the perfect spouse. The perfect spouse will eventually, at whatever you try to, you will attract. If you're hunting for a if you're hunting for a spouse in a bar, you're going to get a bar girl or a bar man. If you're hunting for a, a folks, look for what you want and be who you would like to have. That cost you the price of it was worth the price of admission, I reckon. Today people demand respect, but respect is earned. The women the Bible, this applies to women and men. Composed, rational, and not given to frivolity. Timothy, uh, and Paul uses in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, silly women laden with sins. You know what that means? It's not just women, but there is a silliness, a foolishness, a lack of, uh, of focus, a lack of dignity, a lack of self-respect. And what ends up happening is that that foolishness impacts the people that are around them, men and women. But when a woman, in, as in Proverbs 31, is clothed with strength and dignity, self-respect, class. Why is she in that? Because she is something? Because she is something special? People nowadays want us to treat women. Oh, you're supposed to treat women as something special. They are special because they're God made. And women, as well as men, should recognize that dignity and worth and value comes not in. Our, do you know what our, our modern science looks to do? It will strip your dignity from you. Our modern science will strip your dignity from you. You know why? Because we are all nothing more than slightly more evolved animals. Our existence is nothing but mere chance. How do you find dignity or, or uh, 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 honor in that? I'm nothing more than a monkey with uh, the ability to read. There's no dignity in that. But God places dignity on us. In that he was willing to die for us. And nowhere in the Bible does it say that God... Uh, is making a place for monkeys. But it sure does say he's making a place for you and I who have accepted him by the blood of his son. There was a time when women were portrayed with dignity, poise, and refinement. It was not about wealth, but it was about an air of work. If you, if you want me, you have to show you are worthy of me. I want my daughter and my son to realize that they don't have to sell their self cheap. Hello? 
They are people of value, of honor, of dignity. And they don't have to sell out cheap. We've told my daughter, be picky. I'll tell my son, be picky. Because not every girl deserves you. Not every boy deserves you. If he is more interested in on what's on the outside than what's on the inside, he don't deserve you. Because Solomon, one of the wisest men who ever lived, and his mother Bathsheba, if that's who it was that spoke this, said that the, the, the outside is fleeting. One day, he's going to roll over and he's going to go, you don't look like the girl I married. And you know what's going to be funny? Is that she, he does not realize because he's stupid. He's not going to realize that I don't look like the guy you married either. I'm still the strapping specimen that I once was. He says while trying to suck it in. The outward is fleeting. The inward. There was a time where men were men, women were happy. There was a time where women were women, and man, a man would say, My, wow, what a woman. Nowadays, we've got men who will refer to their wife in the basest and nastiest and filthiest of terminologies. Not as a princess, not as a woman that he loves, but as with, with vain and profane words. And you expect her to hold you in dignity? When you refer to her by words that you would not refer to your dog as? We don't esteem those attributes anymore. But I believe that they are still there. Possibly below the surface, young ladies who are desiring to be respected. They hunger to be admired. Maybe even older ladies who want to simply be loved for what's inside not what's outside. They want to be appreciated. Not outward beauty that fades away, but an inward strength and dignity that exemplifies a faith, a soul saved by grace, a life transformed, a child of the King. Let me tell you something. My wife ain't no Barbie and I ain't no Ken, but God has saved us both and He put us together and God made us one flesh and I love her. She can't reach the top cabinet and I'm constantly bumping my head on things. But God put us together. And I love her. And I couldn't picture another woman to spend the rest of my life and grow old with. A woman that fears the Lord. If you have a desire to be loved, and who doesn't? And your heart cries out to be appreciated, and which one doesn't? Then fear the Lord. The scripture, appro scripture proves that it will not be your amazing style or fashion consciousness that will be remembered. But a woman's husband and children will remember that she honored God. We see this as ideal, but it is simply truth. It, ladies, it is your birthright. If you have sold out cheap, it is not because you were made cheap. Men, if you will honor her, call her blessed, she, she might just start living up to the name. Because my wife has confidence in me. I've lived up to things that I didn't think I could do to her. Children, Honor your mother. According to Ephesians 6 and 2, it is the first commandment with promise 
she might not be perfect, but if, but if she is striving to live an ideal life, honor her, assist her, and follow her. And mama, be worth following. So my conclusion, everybody loves to hear that word. The perfect woman might seem as fictitious as unicorns and leprechauns. But the virtuous ideal of Proverbs 31 is available to every woman who sets her sights to honor the Lord. It may not be something that you attain, but it is something that you can strive for and you will grow in it. And you might not even recognize it, but those around you will say, that woman is blessed. And your husband will say, I am blessed to have her as my wife. And your children will say, I am blessed to have her as my mother. Prove to this sin-cursed world. I wrote this and I like this little sentence. Just saying. Prove to this sin-cursed world that there is beauty that can't be pumped in with Botox, can't be painted on with Maybelline, and can't be dressed up with Parisian style. That's a good sentence. It is a strength and dignity of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. Trust in God with her whole heart, loving her Father more than anyone else. And let me tell you something. Men, if she loves God more than you, this is one time it's good to come and say it. Because if she can love God more than she loves you, then she'll love you in the only way that you can truly appreciate her. And if you have a virtuous lady in your life, rise up and call her blessed. Important. You are a blessed woman. Love you. Lord, I've tried to be.